Hello, my name is Rob Picard. I'm the security lead at Vanta. And I wanna say thank you to the TechCrunch community for letting me come and talk about Vanta, trust, compliance, and security. So specifically today, we're gonna to talk about how to prove trust to prospects, right? How to win deals in an economic downturn. Um, you know, the core of a lot of startup security work is proving your security to stakeholders to your customers, to your prospects, to your VCs, um, in, potentially even to employees. Everybody wants to know that they can trust you. So uh, like I said, I'm the security lead at Vanta. Um, it's ultimately my responsibility to do this at Vanta, where luckily we have a bunch of products that help with this uh, specific problem. Today, we're going to talk about um, who is Vanta? You know, what, what is Vanta exactly? Why do you need to automate this process? Why is it worth investing in automation uh, when it comes to compliance? What are trust reports, which is a Vanta product, a little bit of a spoiler, uh, and why and how do you use trust reports? And we'll talk through a little bit of uh, any questions that come up. So let's first talk about Vanta's story. Um, it, it's, it's pretty straightforward, automate compliance and simplify security. So we help startups scale their security practices by automating the process of getting the industry's most important standards, right? Your SOC 2, uh, your ISO, um, you know, GDPR, CCPA, HIPAA, we, we have a number of standards that we support, but really the core of all of them is automating the process to simplify it, right? So Vanta was founded in 2016. Um, excuse me, Vanta, the story starts in 2016. Vanta was founded in 2017 uh, by Christina Cassiopo. Um, she co-founds Vanta to provide small businesses with the tools that they need to go through um, these really, you know, potentially onerous compliance processes, um, starting off with SOC 2. Um, in 2020, Vanta surpassed $10 million in ARR. Um, it had helped 1,000 customers improve their security, uh, all before raising a Series A. That, that's kind of a whole storyline around that itself, which I think is really interesting about how Vanta chose to really build up their revenue um, you know, to 10 million ARR before even starting the Series A process. Um, in 2021, uh, Vanta raised the first round of institutional venture capital um, led by Sequoia. And in 2022, uh, Vanta raised $110 million Series B funding at a $1.6 billion valuation. So it's been a very fun year. Um, I joined myself in 2021, and it's been great to see the company grow through all of those stages. So why automate compliance, right? This is, uh, it's a fundamental question anytime you want to automate something, right? There's a balance of, of how much effort you're going to have to put into automating it versus the effort to just go and do the thing, right? And a lot of compliance comes down to annual processes, right? A lot of times it's, hey, once a year, an auditor is going to come and we're going to have to do a whole bunch of work, but it's like once a year, do we really need to pay for something, spend the time to write some code potentially? What do we need to do to automate this? And is it really worth the effort? So um, one of the key pieces to this question of the why, right? Why should I invest in automating security compliance is that security is a key pillar of your company, right? It's, it's a key piece of your business, your ability to close deals and be a good steward of your customers sensitive data, right? Not only is it good to have good security, it's like a nice thing to have. It's, it's really important to actually closing your deals, right? You're going to be faced with a litany of questionnaires and uh, questions about certificates and standards. You're going to have to prove things to auditors. You're going to have to prove things to customers and prospects constantly, right? And so the traditional way before that 2017 founding of Vanta was you would spend a bunch of hours trying to figure out what you're even supposed to do here, right? If you don't personally have experience with SOC 2 or ISO, then it is an enormous black box and it's extremely opaque. It's very difficult to wrap your head around what exactly am I supposed to do here, right? I can read all the theory and the philosophy of what a good security program looks like, but my job is to go and close deals and make the company money. And if you're a small startup, it's to stay alive. And if you're spending all your time trying to wrap your head around this one very specific element of your business, then you're not spending time on other elements of your business. So you spend a lot of time researching what you're supposed to do. You pay consultants for guidance on what you're supposed to do. 
you go through an audit with a large firm, uh, an established brand that's going to help you, you know, go through the audit process. They're going to spend a ton of time with you going through uh, manual evidence gathering. So part of the audit process is you have to prove that you're doing the right security things that you say you're doing. So you're going to spend hours and hours and hundreds of hours potentially going into various dashboards, ticketing systems, documentation systems, wikis, and you're going to take screenshots and you're going to put them all in a folder and you're going to label them. This one is for this particular requirement that was asked for on this date, but updated to this one here. It's just very old school manual labor to get this hundreds uh, of screenshots together in front of your auditor so they can look at it and decide whether or not it meets the the bar that you set in your controls and according to the framework and it's it's an enormous amount of time so you're spending less time closing sales hiring and on product innovation right so with vanta Boom, continuous monitoring within minutes, right? We plug into your, your systems, we plug into that ticketing system, we plug into those dashboards, we plug into your identity provider and your HRIS systems, and we learn about your company. We say, okay, cool, this person onboarded, we see that they were added here, they have MFA enabled, that meets all the controls, you're good. You get a green checkbox, right? You don't have to worry. You don't have to spend hundreds of hours uh, staring at all these places to understand whether or not you're even doing the thing, much less proving it to someone else, right? You get access to a team of security and audit experts to navigate the requirements. Um, you know, even folks like myself, uh, especially on the security side, we have a huge team of security and compliance experts who are focused on helping customers get through their audit successfully, right? And we want them to succeed, not just at getting the piece of paper at the end of an audit, whether that's a SOC 2 report and attestation or it's an ISO 2701 certificate, we want you to walk away with not just that piece of paper, but peace of mind, knowing that you have set yourself up to get it again in a year without going through the same exact process of hundreds of hours of preparation. We automate all the tests and evidence gathering. Uh, we just go into all the systems we plugged into and have them monitoring and we can show the auditor, look, like th they had a green checkbox. We're good to go. There's no exceptions here. There's nothing that arose here. And where there's anything there, there's tools in the system that you can go and, and address as they come up. And audits are typically completed in three to six months uh, for 75% less cost. And this depends on the specific standard that you're uh, going for, right? If you're going for a SOC 2 type 1, I I think we just released a case study today that somebody got it done in five days, right? Uh, those can be very, very fast because they don't require a large observation window from the auditor. If you go for a type 2, that's usually where you'll see like a three to six month uh, experience. And then if you go for ISO, it's probably going to be a similar range and on and on and on. Every, every standard has its own set of circumstances. So why do people come to Vanta? Um, growth, they want to demonstrate security to close more deals while scaling security practices across a growing team, right? So they're growing their team. They want to make sure that they are on top of what they are supposed to be doing, and they don't want to spend a lot of time dealing with that, right? They might be too small to have a full-time person who's dedicated to that, or they might have a huge, you know, full team doing this, and they don't want to have a extra headcount to sit there and stare at all these different dashboards and go ha hassle people who aren't completing their audit requirements. So. We can decrease the manual work and time required to obtain a certification or an attestation uh, or you know whatever the, the appropriate standard deliverable is. We can help you close an expertise gap that you might have at your company, right? So a lot of customers, they, they don't quite know uh, every standard uh, for sure. They, don't, they might know one standard really well. Um, they might not know, okay, if I have SOC 2, how difficult is it to go and get ISO 2701 as well? Um, we can help close that gap. And ultimately, you know, folks have limited bandwidth, right? That's that's across the board. Nobody has too much bandwidth, especially these days. So having high value activities prioritized, like sales, engineering, um, that helps, you know, move your business forward while you minimize the compliance related distractions. And those distractions can come from just figuring out what you're supposed to do. It can come from getting the work done to, to appropriately do the thing you're supposed to do. To prove that to an auditor and to deal with what you know if there were gaps there if you really did make a mistake somewhere along the line and the auditor finds uh that mistake now you're spending time dealing with that fact and, and understanding how that's going to impact your compliance so 
we help you address all those things. And that's, that's usually why people are coming to us. Now, there's a path uh, through all of that, which is your goal is ultimately to improve your business, right? Your goal is to close more sales. Your goal is to hire appropriately. Your goal is to innovate on your product, right? Um, and, and this is a lot of time that you can spend on audits. And, you know, with automation, you can reduce that time by, by enormous amount, right? But there's also a lot we can do even if we step outside the traditional world of compliance, right? And that's where we, we talk about what is next generation compliance uh, according to this, this slide, right? So, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we have the trust report, right? This is a new product that Vanta has uh, come out with that helps you prove your compliance with a set of requirements or you know, prove your security posture without talking about a specific standard, right? So this is a report that you can send to a customer or a prospect or any other stakeholder, a partner, and you can show them that you care about security. You can show them the current state of a continuously monitored security posture, and you can present them with any documentation that you feel is appropriate for that, um, for that uh, use case. So it's an incredibly fast way to build trust into your organization and demonstrate your commitment to security without specifically having to go through an audit process, right? Because we are continuously monitoring through technical integrations. So we proactively prove your security posture with or without compliance certifications. You can choose to have certifications or reports or attestations, whatever you want in the documentation of your trust report, but you don't have to put those in there. A lot of times folks will put questionnaires that are pre-filled right into the uh, into the documents tab to avoid you know uh, more questionnaires. And, and this, this gets to reducing the back and forth around vendor security reviews, right? Um, a lot of times I've seen this uh, take the, the form of, you know, neither party quite knows what they need to get through the security review, right? Especially if you're dealing with a really big company, sometimes the people you're talking to aren't the people who set the requirements, right? So what you can do is you can uh, present them with this report and they can share that wherever that needs to go within their organization. You have a clear set of, of your standards and your posture that you can deliver and it reduces the back and forth, right? They don't have to come back and say, well, can you fill this out? Uh, can you do you have this PDF? Do you have your latest penetration desk report? Uh, did you get that thing fixed? You know, you put all that up front in one document, you have a bunch of continuously monitored controls and you put that uh, right in front of them, right? Uh, hopefully this decreases your security questionnaire load, right? That's uh, a really big goal here because security questionnaires take a lot of time. They're a huge distraction from closing deals. I personally have filled out uh, dozens, if not hundreds of security questionnaires myself. It is a lot of work. It's a lot of repetition. And ultimately they're all asking the same core question, which is, can I trust you? Right? That's what trust reports deliver. And you're always going to get someone who's like, well, you got to fill out our thing. It's got to be our specific thing. But luckily there's a lot of standardization that has occurred in the security questionnaire space. You fill a few of those out one time, stick them on your trust report, and you're going to bypass a lot of those uh, questionnaires. You can also use all of this data. We're, we're integrated into these systems. We're, we're monitoring them continuously. We're showing that on a, you can put that on a public security page, right? You can go right now to trust.vanta.com and you can see ours, right? We put it on a public page. And if there's sensitive documents, you can put that behind an NDA, watermark download, these sorts of features. Um, you can always send it, you know, the unprotected uh, version privately to, to somebody, but this demonstrates a really strong commitment to what was previously a very behind the scenes process, right? Um, to ask for your uh, certificate or your report or see any details about your security posture in the past, it required a lot of back and forth, right? It required, okay, well, you got to go sign this piece of paper. And how serious is this deal exactly? You say, forget all that. We're proud of our security posture. We're proud to be trustworthy and we want you to trust us. So here is this report. So it also makes it a lot easier um, within your organization to understand the answers to some of these questions that come up, right? A lot of times uh, that stuff gets siloed in a specific team or a specific department, um, and sometimes a specific person, and that person's out, then good luck, right? Um, 
But what you can do with this is you put this all in one place. It's central. Everybody sees it. Everyone has access to it. Everyone can use it to get their job done. Cool. <clears throat> so speaking of uh, trust reports and how and why to use them, right? Um, a lot of people do it in different ways. We have a handful of customers that use it publicly. Um, some use it privately. They all put different things on their trust reports, right? There's that core set of controls that are continuously monitored. There's FAQ. There's uh, you know a handful of other pieces of information you can include, um, and, and people change it up, right? So you can see in this case the customer they're using this to show their SOC two type two uh, report, right? And you know somebody can request access to that. Like I said, it'll have to get approved, and there's NDA that can be you know included and that sort of thing, um, and, and all very streamlined. The penetration test, um, their DPA, those are some of the documents they've chosen to share, and they have some details about how to contact them, and uh, you can see. As I said, this continuously monitored, updated 21 minutes ago, uh, security controls that help demonstrate that, like, hey, this isn't just some point in time thing that we did 16 months ago, 12 months ago. Who knows, right? Um, depending on how your windows align with SOC 2 and, and ISO and all these sorts of things, this is a continuous thing. This is a part of our company um, going forward. So in this case, the customer chose they don't need to use the documents, right? There, we're just going to put the controls. We feel like that's enough of a demonstration, right? Uh, that it's it's continuously monitored, and we care a lot about these things. And you know, those those documents might not have as much relevance to their use case, right? And and here's another customer they've chosen to put some of their policies there, right? That's another request that often comes through security reviews is a request for your policies, right? Um, hey, can you send me your acceptable use policy? your code of conduct, your uh, access control, your incident response plan, your all of these things. And if you feel comfortable with a certain policy, either being publicly available or privately available or behind an NDA with a watermark, all these sorts of things, then you can make that available on your trust report. So a lot of our customers, um, they have public trust reports. This is a handful of them. You can actually also go to um, trust.banta.com. Like I mentioned, you can see our own trust report. We try to keep it looking good since uh, we're the ones who make it. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's the, the next gen compliance portion of this. So to summarize, trust is essential in today's climate, right? Um, it's It's only becoming more important and it's only becoming more complicated to prove that trust to other partners, right? To your stakeholders. So a lot of customers will, you know, uh, will will see that like their goal is ultimately to show the market, show our competition, uh, show that we're we're different from our competition within the market as a trusted vendor by displaying their security upfront. Uh, publicly on their trust page, right? Always have the option of doing it privately, but we've been, uh, honestly, I've been a little bit surprised to see uh, so many people just want it like as public as possible, just put all the documents out there. I don't, I don't care. Like I, I have no, you know, no, um, no secrets to hide here. If, if I didn't do something right and I got it caught on the penetration test, good. That shows that like the system is working, right? It shows I got it fixed. That's the right attitude to have, I think, right? Is, is just really put that stuff front and center, be honest, transparent with with the state of your startup security, and this helps you do that to whatever degree of you know explicitness that you would like, right? You can always keep a little bit more kind of behind the doors, but you can put out there uh, and put your best foot forward. So, proactively share real time monitoring to demonstrate your transparency and security posture, right? That's one of the key differentiators between the trust report and another sort of. Uh, you know, more traditional security compliance standard is this is not once a year, twice a year, once every few years. This is continuous. This is we, you know, you are getting an email when somebody doesn't onboard correctly and, and one of your tests is about to be failing, right? You're getting notified in real time. You can fix those things in real time. So awesome. All right. That's all I had to say uh, so far there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab a few questions from the uh, the chat, answer them. Um, and uh, let's see here. Down to some windows open here. Okay. So if we get, if you get a trust report, uh, the question is, do you recommend getting a compliance standard like SOC 2 as well as a trust report? So um, I, my personal recommendation here is um, always 
do what's going to make you money, right? It, it's pretty straightforward, but you know, get a SOC 2 report if it's going to close deals for you. If you have customers or you have prospects who are asking for SOC 2, a lot of the times if you're working with larger companies, they might specifically require it. They might say, we're not going to sign on the dotted line, but you can say, hey, we'll put it in the contract. We'll get this done. Let's sign the contract now. I've seen that work, right? So what I would say here is if you are going to close a deal or you suspect you're going to close deals or you have a, a really good reason to invest in a SOC 2, go for it, right? You can put that on your trust report and you have both the benefits of the traditional, uh, the, the cache from a traditional audit uh, and the sort of modern next gen, hey, we're continuously monitoring. I'm putting all these documentations up front in your face and I have this SOC 2 report that you want to, right? So you don't have to fight the fight and say like, no, 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 no. Like, you know, you go to your prospects, they say SOC 2, you say, no, we're not doing that anymore. That's old school. You can just do it if it's going to close the deal, right? You know, it's, it's sort of um, pragmatically speaking, do what's going to work for you. Um, but there's, there's nothing stopping you from getting every single certificate out there um, other than like, is it really <laughs> the best investment of your time? Um, I should say uh, attestation for SOC 2, not certificate. Um, cool. Uh, do most companies post a trust report on their website? Um, I don't know if the word most is correct here, but a bunch do. Like I mentioned earlier, it's uh, it kind of surprised me because I expected there to be a lot of hesitancy to share some of this information because it really is like, hey, you know, this it, it is real time. Like, that's not a joke, right? It really does show like this is in, you know, if you don't do stuff, then it drops off there, right? Um, and it's also like, even just like the list of documents you have available, sometimes people feel like, oh, like, I don't want people to know like when I got my penetration test done or like what policy list I have. Um, but I think that's just, that's old school. And people, especially startups, they're like, no, this is a competitive advantage for us. This is helping my sales team focus on answering customer questions that are about our product and our differentiation in the market and not answering questions about, you know, the, the same, I mean, you have a CCTV camera in your office, like it's online 452 of some security questionnaire, right? Like they can focus on, on the important stuff and share all the information um, as widely as possible because it's, it's only going to help. Okay. How long, did, how long did it take for you to set up a trust report? A um, little bit of a tough question to answer because like we got obviously like pretty early access. So like we, you know, really quick, but it was like really early version of it. Um, really though, it's it's pretty straightforward to set up. Um, the, the, once you connect, so, so if you are going into Vanta and you um, already are a customer, already have SOC 2, if you're already connected to your systems, then it's like really just like a couple of clicks and we display that information on your trust report and then you can clean it up and say, well, I want this document or I want this description to be this and I want the email here to be that. You know, you can clean it up, you know, less than an hour at work. Um, if you're just getting started with Vanta with a trust report, then you're going to spend a little bit of time working on... Um, you know, getting those integrations in place, right? So you're going to connect your your Google, your Okta, your uh, so whatever sort of, you know, Microsoft or what, whatever tools you use that are important to your compliance posture and that we can pull that sort of read-only evidence from. Um, you're going to use some of that. So you'll spend a little bit of time connecting it. It's really, it doesn't take very long. I think, uh, like, I, I'd say a day's worth of work and it's probably a lot less than that, right? So, um Honestly, yeah, it takes a lot less than that, uh, even. Okay. What are the things that are important for customers to see around security posture? Yeah, that's a that's actually a really good question. So part of building this product, right, we like tried to look at like a bunch of security questionnaires, like what, what are they actually getting at? What do they actually care to see, right? Um, and you do see a lot of patterns. Excuse me. Um, you do see a lot of patterns. I think the key thing, uh, there's like a core underlying theme that they just want to know that you're actually like thinking about this and you're not just kind of like BSing your way through it. Like they want to know like, hey, you actually have like a program where you go through and you address security issues and you think about them when you buy new products and you think about them when you set things up for your for authentication for software and stuff like that. Right. But a lot of the more specific themes are things like uh, secure sign on uh, or sorry, single sign on um, SSO. So like, do you use like, a, like I said, sort of an Okta or like a login with Google everywhere? And if so, awesome, that makes things a lot easier. Uh, do you use MFA everywhere, right? So some of those basic enterprise um, security practices. Along those lines also, endpoint security is a really big theme. So 
Do you have basic anti-malware in place, right? Do you have MDM, uh, mobile device management, where you can centrally control your fleet of, you know, uh, employee machines that you're distributing to your employees? You know, there's there's sort of just a general concern like, hey, are we going to give you our data? It's going to end up on a laptop that's going to get like stolen and you have nothing you can do about it, right? Um, like, yeah, no, we have the right software. We can hit a button here and remotely wipe or software the laptop's encrypted right it's got the disk encryption on and we know that for a fact it was closed it can't be unlocked you know, that, that sort of stuff um on the cloud side it's sort of uh, kind of some basic like posture management stuff so hey uh like we we make sure that s3 buckets aren't public right like that's you know <laughs> like that's an important one that gets a lot of people right um hey we we have appropriate access management to our cloud environment or to other critical systems, right? So important SaaS systems, that sort of thing. We do access reviews, we do that sort of thing, right? Um, I think those are some of the, the big ones, right? Um, and security education would be the last bit, like, hey, do you appropriately onboard people, let them know what they're responsible for, what kind of threats they might see at your company, that sort of thing. So um, that's another one that uh, Vanta is really good at helping with. Um, we have some good content there. So. Yeah, you know, I think those are kind of the, the main things that like when customers or prospects, they want to see like what like what they're asking when they give you a questionnaire is really more of like, you know, these sorts of general themes. And there's just a lot of different tools for trying to get at that same information. All right. Um, what advice uh, for new users setting up trust reports? Um, I would say. The main thing that like the main hot take here is just like, it, it's kind of fine to be more open, right? Like, I think there's always a little bit of hesitancy, hesitancy to say like, well, what if I put like, I got a penetration test done um, and they found stuff, right? Like, cause they did their job and, <laughs> and they're good at it, right? They found stuff and like, I'm like, oh my gosh, that what does that mean now? They found a problem in my code and we fixed it, but now I have this report. Just put it out there, let people know like, hey, yeah, they found a, a security vulnerability and they uh, fix it and we fixed it, right? So I think that's that's the key thing um, to keep in mind here is you, uh, you you can be a little bit more open on some of these things, right? And, and I think you'll be surprised to find that like, that's actually really comforting to your customers and your prospects. So um, I'd say, you know, put, put as much uh, sort of good formal documentation as you have. So you have your stack of policies, your acceptable use policy, that sort of thing. Put all that on there. I think that's actually a great practice. Um, I think even we can improve in, in how we use the trust reports in that way because people do look for that stuff, right? They, they ask for it. Um, it's not the most common ask. A lot of times, like questionnaires are the most common ask, um, but that sort of stuff's good. And then the last bit I'd say is just, yeah, questionnaires. Put Go and fill out like a few standard questionnaires um, and put them on there, right? So like your, uh, your cake, your VSA core, your VSA full, that's what we have on ours. And it just like, it saves so much time. We get so many, you know, salesperson's like, oh yeah, they asked for like VSA or they asked for cake or whatever. And it's like, oh, it's, it's already there, right? Like done, don't have to think about this anymore. And that is great. And if you look at the statistics, the metrics that are on our page, you can see like when different documents get downloaded and, and whatnot. Um, and uh, that that's, you can see like people go and look at these things, right? You can actually track like what is important to people and what's not in that way, which is kind of, kind of cool. Um, the other thing I'd say on that on that note, actually, I will add one more thing is the um, the document list, right? You can list as many documents as you want and what you want to put on the first page versus you have to click. Um, a lot of people really prioritize that, like what is actually on the front page of it, because that's what like a lot of people are going to, you know, kind of go straight to. So put what you want to, sort of most of your people to see. So a good standard questionnaire, um, if you have a talk to report or your ISO certificate, that stuff is is great right there. Um, I've also seen a lot of success, uh, you know, people who write like a security brief or like a white paper, that sort of thing. They, you know, kind of like outline a lot and sort of written prose that's a little bit more storytelling. That's like, hey, look, this is how we think about security. And this is how we, you know, uh, think about enterprise security versus data security versus cloud security, you know, all these different, you know, however you want to break it down, um, these different categories. A lot of people will... Um, write something up like that, stick it in a PDF, stick it there. Or they'll just, I mean, it's not really about trust reports in that case, but like stick it on their website, right? Um, where they just like in in like in text on the website um, as opposed to in like a PDF or something like that. So whatever is most appropriate for your specific market, right? Okay, um, and yeah, uh, there was a question here about um, specific standard questionnaires you should have. Um, yeah, I mean, like 
whatever you whatever you have like it is good i feel like a lot of times so, so we have like cake on ours vsa core vsa pool we update it um uh i think we have like a quarterly sort of reminder to go and like take a look but we like at least once a year we're making sure that everything's back like a full revamp back up to speed on and some of the questionnaires they update their versions as well um so pick a few of them and stick them on there like it, it's not a it's, it's a pain but it's not like a whole lot of work and it saves you a lot of work because you might have a prospect who really cares about vsa core or vsa or cake or one or in particular and so you know if you have a few up there you're going to hit like you know some of the most common ones and then you'll have some people who they just want you to fill out something they need something like some sort of artifact of your security program and um, if you have something standard then they'll just use that right they don't require you to go use their thing um it's probably not worth doing like all of the standard questionnaires like there's like probably you know at least a dozen of them and then you're gonna have to keep those up to date that's that's the kind of ongoing maintenance that comes from doing a standard questionnaire um but uh yeah do, do a few of them do a few of the popular ones awesome all right well um that is all from me so there's a special discount a thousand dollars off vanta you can go to vanta.com slash 1k dash discount to get that but um thank you very much I, I really appreciate you you watching through to the end here and um i hope you have a fantastic day